Hello everyone. Welcome back to City Stutters. My name is Jess. It's been a while since I put out a video. I'm sorry that it's taking me so long to get these videos out. We've had a very busy month. Um, we call this season birthday season because all of my kids and all of my family seem to have birthdays from now until fall. So my videos might not come out weekly like they were before, but I will do my best. So today we are going to be talking about vermicomposting and I'm just going to give you some updates on the quail and updates in the garden. As I was editing this video, I realized I forgot to explain what vermicomposting even is. So vermicomposting is using worms to compost kitchen scraps and other items down so you can have food for your garden. So these are examples of the bins that we have and I have one more to show, but I wanna give you some ideas on what you can do and how much compost you want to make. Online, you can find a lot of verm vermicomposting bins already set up for you. Um, I don't recommend buying them. They're really expensive and you can save a lot of money just by using bins. And I've purchased those blue bins were from Dollar Tree, so I spent a total of $5 on those compared to hundreds of dollars for a vermicomposting bin that you can find online. The big bins you can just find at Walmart. Um, you drill some holes in them and you're good to go. So it's so much cheaper to do it this way than to buy online. So basically the only thing you need are your bins. Um, you can buy some bedding to go inside. Um, I've used Coco Core on a couple of my bins and that works really well. But if you don't wanna spend the extra money on Coco Core, you can just shred up a bunch of newspapers um, and then put some other things in there like coffee grounds and some food and stuff and make sure it's a little bit moist, not soaking wet, but just damp. And your worms will do just fine. That's how we set up our first bin. So you don't even need to spend any money aside from your actual bins. And of course you need to find your worms. And I've ordered my worms online on Amazon and they're called red wigglers. So those are really good composters when you're looking into vermicomposting. There are a few other types you can buy, but I really like the red wigglers. These are the bins that I bought at the Dollar Tree, each for a dollar. And here is where my worms are down under here. There's a little guy right there. So basically, this is the cocoa core that they've been working on. They eat that too, and there's just some scraps in here. You can put your scraps of, you know, like your food scraps, your garden scraps. Don't overfeed because then you'll run into problems with, um, with it being too soggy. There's another one. So you don't wanna put too much in at a time, just enough for them to snack on and compost down. There's a banana. Ooh, they like the banana. So yeah, that's about what you wanna keep too right there as far as feeding them. Underneath this bucket, we have a brick to keep it up off the ground and anything that drains down will be caught down here. So you want something on the bottom of your bin to catch whatever comes out of the holes. You wanna lift that up for us so we can see the bottom? So you can see I drilled some holes in the bottom here so it can drain. And I'm not really having too big of a problem with this bin being too moist. So when I am done with this bin and I wanna use this dirt, this is a really cool method of getting your worms out of here in an easy way. So I have more bins here. Let's see, this one has holes in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill well, first of all, I'm not going to feed these guys. I'm gonna let them finish off their food and then I'm going to put this on top and press it down and then I'm going to feed them here so they come through the top side and they want to be in this bin. And then I can just take the worm bin off and use this for soil. So that's a really great way of doing vermicomposting. If you have spare buckets, you can also use two buckets in the same type of way. I have some in here underneath this bag. So there's another option. If you don't want to go to the store and buy anything, you can just use any old buckets that you have lying around. 
Of course, in the bottom one, you're gonna wanna put a brick or something to keep it up off the bottom again. With this bin, we have two bins here. So this is a bin here, this is a bin on the bottom. We drilled holes in the top bin, so any liquid will drain down to the bottom bin. This is the oldest bin we set up. My son actually set this bin up years ago. And um, yeah, he was the first one interested in worm compost. I don't know what got him interested in it, but um, it's been great for the garden and I've appreciated his little hobby. So I just wanna point something out on this side. This is about ready to harvest. So what I've done is this is the feeding side. I'll feed them over here so all the worms gravitate to this side. And then I can go through this and use it directly in the garden. So once you're getting ready to use it in the garden, you want to draw them to the other side. So we will be doing that here in the next couple of weeks, harvesting all the castings. Okay, now that you have your worm bins set up, you're probably wondering what to feed them and what not to feed them. So you can feed them so many good things. You can use old coffee grounds, uh, used coffee grounds. You can use crushed up eggshells. What I do is take my eggshells and put them in our coffee grinder and then I will, it turns into like a powder and then you can spread it in your worm bin and that's really good for them and for your garden as well. Um, you can pretty much feed them almost anything. I would not feed them meat. I would not feed them high acidic foods such as pineapple, orange peels. I've also heard that onions are not good for them. So try to stay away from those, but almost any kind of a kitchen scrap, like vegetables, old fruits, like strawberries and things like that, they can tolerate. Again, don't overfeed. If you overfeed, your bin will start to stink and get too wet. You don't want a bin that's too wet, it's not good. I've done that and it's pretty gross and stinky, so uh, don't overfeed. Yeah, they like cardboard. You can take old cardboard and cut it up into pieces and put it in there. They'll eat the cardboard, they'll eat old newspaper. Um, I'd be careful about the inks on those just to make sure that um, there's not colored ink or glossy newspaper. Uh, I wouldn't use that, but any kind of shredded paper is really good for the worms. Um, yeah, salad, lettuces, whatever. They'll eat just about anything and compost it down really fast for it. So the last thing I wanna talk about are issues in the worm bin. So um, one issue that you possibly could run into are fruit flies. Um, we have dealt somewhat with fruit flies, but if we, if we overfeed, that's usually when it happens. So if you are going to give them a feeding, what I try to do is kind of bury it a little bit under the dirt uh, so the fruit flies don't get attracted to it. The other thing that we've had, and I still have, um, it's nearly impossible to get rid of once you have them, are those little mites that can get in your worm bin. And they don't hurt your worms, they're just ugly and kind of annoying, but they're not gonna do anything. And you can also get pot worms in your uh, worm bin. They're just these itty bitty white worms. I have no idea where they come from. It's crazy. They just kind of appear. <laughs> I don't know if there are eggs on them that are sent from the company that's sending you the worms or what happens, but they will appear in your worm bin. And again, they're not going to hurt your worms, but um, they're just kind of there. And the pot worms, usually that happens if your worm bin is too wet. So if you find yourself with potworms, two solutions is to not feed them so much, wait for a while before you feed them, and also sprinkling uh, eggshells on top is really good because they like the high acidity. So if your worm bin is getting too acidic, that kind of helps the acidity levels to go down. So those are some problems that you can have and some solutions. Um, once you get the mites in your worm bin, you can try to put bait in. They love avocados, so you can put avocado on the top and they'll all be drawn to avocados, but I promise you, you're probably not going to get rid of them once you have them, but again, it's not gonna hurt any. The last thing I wanna say is that in a worm bin, you will need some grit. It helps them digest their food. So you could either put a little bit of sand in there or the eggshells will do. If you put eggshells in your bin, you don't really need to worry a whole lot about grit. 
So a quail update for you. Our hens are all laying now. Uh, this younger generation has not started laying yet, but all six of my other hens have been laying uh, an egg a day. So we get half a dozen eggs every day. I've started saving um, some of the eggs from selected birds that I really love the coloring on and we're currently incubating those. So we should get some new chicks here pretty soon. We're also going to start culling some of the males. They are becoming problematic and I knew this was going to happen. Um, when they reach maturity, they start picking on each other and they get aggressive. So we're going to have to thin the males down quite a bit. So that's another reason I'm incubating more eggs. We have 12 quail eggs in here that my own hens have laid and now we're going to hatch them for the next generation. We've had a few rainy days and warmer days, and look at how great the lettuce is looking. Even my new sprouts are looking great. They are recovering. Over here in Mr. Stacky, we have some radishes popping up. Finally got a tulip, one lonely tulip. <laughs> So I'm outside in my garden. I'm gonna give you guys a few updates since the last time to show you what's popping up. Our asparagus is coming through. Excited to try fresh asparagus this year. This is my kohlrabi bed. You can see all the little sprouts. We love kohlrabi, so I wanted to plant a lot this year. Look how great the peas are looking sending out their little tendrils. So these are actually tomato beds for my indeterminate tomatoes, but I wanna show you something cool. Because we trellis them, we'll plant the tomatoes in the middle and on the sides, because I prune and trellis, I can grow other things. So we have beets growing here. Hope you can see the little beet seedlings. There's a group of them. So these two beds are full of beets and we will also have tomatoes here. My blueberry bushes are starting to get buds. Hopefully this means a lot of blueberries this year. Look at all those bees around the plum tree. It's so great. I think this might be the first year we actually get plums. This tree is either three or four years old. This tree is not as old as the other one, but this is the first year it's actually blossoming. So that's excited. This is the other plum tree. Usually when you plant plum trees, you need two for pollination purposes. So we have two here. And then over here, we have a little peach tree that a friend gave me last year. And these are great in our area. They produce little peaches, but they produce a lot. So I'm excited about that. I really need to prune this bed, prune these old raspberries, but these are my thornless raspberries. And I love them because they don't poke me every time I try to pick their fruit. And they did so great last year, you guys. We had so many raspberries and I got to freeze some and save some. So excited to see them coming back as well. Planted comfrey around my trees. Um, this is a great thing to grow in your garden because it is a minor plant. It sends roots very deep into the ground and mines those minerals that are down far down um, and brings them up into their leaves. And then you just chop them down and it fertilizes your garden. You can use it in other beds. I've used the comfrey in other beds just to fertilize them and give them extra nutrients. Look at how big the Egyptian walking onions are getting. They're huge. These are awesome. I'm going to dehydrate the leaves and then use them in my cooking for the winter. I did that last year and it was really nice to have onions all winter long. They're kind of like green onions. 
Well, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for hanging out with me and I hope you guys are all enjoying this weather. It's sunny outside and it's warming up. So I hope everybody can get out in their gardens and get growing. Till next time.